Okay. So as anticipated by Iñaki, the core topic of this webinar is the business model in iCargo. During my presentation, I will go through these main following points. First of all, I would like to introduce what is a business model and why it's useful to define it. And then I will explain a well-known tool to design and define business model, the so-called business model canvas. This tool was proposed by Osterwalder and it's quite successful and widely used. Then I will focus on the iCargo ecosystem by identifying and describing the roles that belong to the ecosystem and their business model. In particular, in iCargo, we have developed a new approach to study the evolution of business models. This methodology will be explained, and I will show you an example. Finally, I will present the iCargo reference business models and the key points of the approach applied in iCargo to define iCargo-related products and a business model. So now, let's start with the business model introduction. Before describing what a business model is, it's better to explain why it's useful to define it. So, by defining a business model, it's possible to achieve a real competitive advantage, since focusing only on product innovation or technology innovation is not sufficient to really gain a competitive advantage from the competitors. So, by defining a clear combination on one side of technology innovation and on the other side of business model definition, it's possible to define a strategy-driven approach to move ahead from the competitors and by applying a new business model. But what really is a business model? Over the past few years, business model have surged into the management vocabulary. While it has become quite fashionable to discuss about business model, many executives remain confused about how to use this concept. Moreover, many authors have offered a definition of the terms business model, and this definition varies from author to author. There is not consensus or mutual understanding in academia on how business model should be defined, and also what should be included in a business model description. Now, none of these definitions, however, appear to have been accepted fully by the business community. And this may, due, may be due to the emanation from so many different perspectives, for example, it is in a strategy, technology, and information system, with the viewpoint of each auto drive term definition. In general terms, we can say that the, the business model concept offers manager a current way to consider the option in an uncertain and fast-moving environment. So a business model is defined as a representation of firms underlying core logic and strategic choices for creating a capturing value with a value network. But the important thing is to find out a way to understand each other while we are speaking about business model, business model and so to find out a same language. This, for this purpose, Osterwalder proposed a well-known tool called, indeed, Business Model Canvas. By applying, by applying this tool, a business model can be defined and described by nine basic building blocks. In this slide, uh, the slide nine, you can see uh, the structure of the Business Model Canvas. And I will go through the detail of this Business Model Canvas in a while. The important aspect to be underlined is that the business model canvas is not just a list of these nine different building blocks, but uh, it, has, it has a pre-structured organization of the blocks in order to facilitate the discussion and the definition of a new business model. So now let's start with the explanation of the meaning of the different blocks. We we'll start with the customer segment. The customer segment represents the people or organization you create value to. Then we have the value proposition. The value proposition describes what value you deliver to the customer, in which way you are helping them to solve their problem or answering their needs. The channels describe the way you use to interact with your customer and in which way you are delivering value to them and then the customer relationship established with the customer. 
Then there is a dimension called re revenue streams. The revenue streams uh, describes how and through which pricing mechanism your business, mo your business, your business model is capturing value. Then we have the key resources required to create value that are mainly the assets indispensable in your business model. And the key activity, that there are the things you really need to create value. Then we have the key partners or key partnerships that are the partners that help you to leverage your business model. Finally, once you have defined the infrastructure to create, deliver and capture value, you are also able to define your cost structure. This is the complete version with the nine different building blocks of the business model canvas. I would like to show you that all the dimension represented on the right part of the canvas is related to the value that is created by your business model, and also the description for who this value is created. While on the left part of the canvas, we have dimension describing how this value is created. Very briefly, now I would like you to, to show an example of a business model canvas applied to a very no, well-known tool. I took Skype. Starting from the client segments, we can see that we have a global internet user, Skype out users, companies that want to make cheaper calls, mainly international calls, and hardware manufacturers. And the value proposition of of Skype is based on different co calls, based Skype to Skype, Skype out, and also related to Skype number. In relation to video conferences, Skype connect, Skype to go, uh, to make conference call, and also uh, the, li the license to, to produce a specific Skype hardware. The, the channel of Skype are mainly uh, based on, the, its, on its website and also uh, with its apps. And also in relation to Skype hardware, a Skype manager uh, related to the Skype business application. The customer relationships are established um, through the direct software download to personalize the uh, service through uh, Skype subscription and the payment of Skype credits. The revenue streams are mainly generated by credit and subscription, of course, the basic services that are free, and the Skype hardware. Now let's look at the dimension related to how this value is created. The key resources are, of course, the developer and the software itself, and also the Skype brand itself. The key activities are again related to the software development and also to the management of the compliant and the customer relationships. The key partnerships are based on Microsoft, on telecommunication companies, hardware manufacturers and payment procedures. In relation to that, we can say that the cost structure mainly is related to the activity uh, for the software development, for the marketing, to manage the compliance, the partner fees, and the telecommunication costs. So now we have also seen an example of the application of the business model canvas. Uh, at this point, uh, we are able to, to answer to our first question, what is a business model? We can say at this point that a business model is a conceptual tool that uh, is uh, a, it's able to describe the value created by the organization and for who this value is created and also how this value is created by describing different elements of the organization. Now, uh, I would like to, um, uh, to go on, focus on uh, the results uh, um, obtained in iCargo in relation to this topic. In particular, in iCargo, a new approach has been defined to study the evolution of business model in relation to the actors involved in the so-called iCargo reference value chain. So uh, before going deeply into the details of this reference business model, I would like to introduce uh, which are the role consider considered in the iCargo reference value chain. The organization considered in this iCargo reference value chain 
are the logistic actors and users involved in the provision of door-to-door -door logistic services. These services uh, have the functionality to cover an entire supply chain or a significant portion of it. And these services aim to, to be more efficient from the logistic point of view, but also at the same time with less environmental impact. And finally, uh, combining these services, um, uh, these services could be combined through different transport modes and providers. But what is uh, a value chain that we refer to? Mainly, this value chain is an ideal representation of the customer supply relationship between organizations participating in the delivery of door-to-door -door logistic services. This value chain considers different companies and type of actors. We have the LSC, the logistic service client, the FSI, the freight service integrator, the LSP, the logistic service provider, and other supporting role as the ISI, the information service integrator. But, uh, for example, a logistics service client, the LSC, is the user purchasing the door-to-door -door service solution, typically representing a manufacturing or distribution company. Along its traditional objective of competitive performance and time costs, the logistics service client is interested in improving the environmental efficiency of its supply chain, while the FSC the freight service integrator is the user providing the combined door to door services to the LSC, typically represented a freight forwarder, a 3PL company, or the LSC itself through its logistic department. What does the, the FSI need? It needs to integrate, plan, and coordinate different logistic services into an effective and efficient door to door solution. Then we have the LSP, the logistics service provider, that are the user providing the transport and logistics services, contributing to the door-to-door -door solution. For example, they are carriers for various transport modes, and and various housing company. The LSP makes his transport resources accessible and well utilized when participating in commodal door-to-door -door chains. We have also in the, value, in the value chain of our cargo some supporting roles. We have the information service integrator that mainly represents the organization providing the information infrastructure required to the LSC, FSI, LSP to integrate their logistics services. The ISI role also provides a link to the value provider and software services. For example, planning or greenhouse gas estimation functionalities offered in a software as a service mode. We also have two other supporting roles that are the transportation network manager and transport regulator that, is, that are not included in this analysis in relation to the business model, since uh, they only will have some indirect benefit from my cargo, and therefore they not, uh, will have some changes in their business model and, and will, not, will not consider them in our analysis. In this slide, we can see the complete cargo business ecosystem, in, represented in its mature stage. We can see that uh, the six uh, roles of the cargo reference value chain are represented. They are represented by rounded rectangles. For each roles, we have identified the corresponding reference business model. These uh, business models are represented by cycles of different colors corresponding to different types of evolution of the cargo ecosystem. For example, the blue cycles indicate pre-existing models that may grow or also shrink in the cargo ecosystem, while the green cycles indicate new models made possible by the cargo implementation. And finally, the red circle indicates models that would be disrupted by iCargo. We have also represented some arrows. Solid arrows represent provision of products or services from one role to another, whereas dash arrows represent evolution from one business model, so from one circle, to another. The, the, 
the evolution of the reference business model in our cargo of the involved actors is find out by applying the new approach that I mentioned before. This approach is, uh, has been developed in iCargo, and uh, I will explain you in the next slide the details of this approach and also uh, the results that we obtain inside the iCargo project. The proposed approach uh, has mainly the focus to, to broaden and explore the traditional concept of business model, showing the Uh, this methodology points out the needs for organizations to build a competency in business model innovation, exploring possible business model alternatives. This is the basic assumption of the approach. But which is the main goal? The main goal is to demonstrate how the introduction of business, mod of business and ICT innovation in logistics can modify the, the current business scenario and market by treating the business model as a variable, as not as a constant element. In this way, we'll be able to align the impact of ICT innovation in logistics, not just an enabler of operational improvement on the current business, but a support infrastructure for new value proposition and new ways of cooperation in the logistic market. Usually, as we have seen, to design a business model, we have to define some different aspects. For example, the nine building blocks of the Observant del Canvas. To define these different nine building blocks, we have to answer two specific questions to define, to define each issue related to each different block. And usually, the, the answers to these questions are fixed. But what if these answers are not fixed? And what if we consider each of them as a variable, and what new opportunities could be ca captured that we can address with the EU current business model? The answer to this question form the essence of the business model evolution and the approach that we proposed. The approach uh, is a, a novel methodology and it's mainly based on different steps. The first step, as you can see in the slide, is based on the collection of data about the current business model in the market. So, what do we did? We mainly collected the current business model implemented by the company belonging to the category of LSC, FSI, LSP, and ISI, and described by the Osterwald del Canvas. Then, we mapped this uh, current business model with the so-called jo jobs to be done that are mainly the business as technical innovation introduced by iCargo in order to find out the impact of iCargo on the current business model. Then we create a template to analyze the possible alternatives answer to the questions. So the questions are based on the impact of the iCargo solution of the different dimension of the canvas. The questions that help to shape a business model represent a, a series of decisions, each of which has a set of different possible outcomes. The proposed templates lays out the variable possible compass within the business model structure. Selecting one possibility from each category and then linking them together forms a new potential business model. Finally, we defined the evolution of the new business model uh, obtained by this template. And uh, on the basis of this output, we are able to make assumption of the evolution of the market of the different category of the logistic act actors involved in the cargo ecosystem. Let's see now the proposed template. Uh, the template is defining different version, one for each category of actors. In this slide, slide 26, we can see the example for the LSC. On the top of this template, we can see the elements of the Osterwalder canvas. Each column uh, represents uh, the nine elements of the canvas. We have value proposition, key activity, key resources, the network, customer segment, channels, customer cost structure and revenue streams. The first row describes the current business model using the Osterwalder canvas. Then, in the other row, 
in the other roles, uh, we represent the impact of the cargo business and technical innovation on the different dimension of the canvas. So we link the logistic innovation to the dimension of the canvas to find out the effect of this benefit on the business model, and in particular, how the elements that characterize the business model of which category of actors are influenced by this solution. These choices are not infinite, and in working through possible combination of variables, it becomes clear that we are inherently interrelated. Now uh, we can see the results of this, uh, of this analysis. By, uh, we can see that the impact could be different. For example, uh, we can have, uh, uh, by combining the different effects, we can have a new business model in which uh, we grouped the, uh, uh, in the impact classified as opportunity, the green rectangles, or just incremental changes, the yellow rectangles. We can also have the possibility that there, there is not a real impact on the um, dimension of the canvas. In this case, we have the white rectangle uh, with, no, with uh, no change um, in, with uh, no change. Uh, I would like now to present you uh, the different evolution of the high cargo business model. Starting from the LSE, we have considered two main categories, the retailers and the manufacturers. Let's see now the possible business model evolution of these two categories. We have, for, uh, concerning the retailers, we have the um, enhanced retailers, the e-commerce focused retailer, and the environmental focused retailer. The enhanced retailers are retailers that want to enhance their business in terms of efficiency and improve customer services due to the impact of iCargo. The e-commerce foc e focused retailers are, uh, main, are traditional and new de dedicated retailers that uh, are pursuing business models based on e-commerce. iCargo will strongly favor these new models. Then uh, we have the environment focused retailers. The most important retailers are redesigning their supply chain towards reduction of emission and energy consumption. And iCargo will accelerate this trend. It's important to underline that the models are incremental and non alternative to each other. This means that the same changes foreseen for the enhanced retailers can be shared also by the two other profiles. About the manufacturers, uh, we have the enhanced manufacturers. And the business model changes for these manufacturers are very similar to those brought by a cargo on an asset retailer. These modifications are mainly related to improvement of the logistic performances in terms of offering a better level of services to the final customer. Then we have the environment-focused manufacturer. The business model changes for this manufacturer are, again, very similar to those brought by a cargo on environment-focused retailer. For the FSIs, I'm sorry, but uh, sorry, but I am trying to go on with the slide. Okay. For the FSIs, there are three different possible evolutions. We have the asset-bound integrators, the network-bound integrators, and the virtual integrators. We can see clearly in this slide the different colors are related to the different new models because we can have an evolution of a new model, a disruption, or also a new opportunity. Starting from the asset-bound integrator, they are freight services integrator owning all uh, all or part of the logistic resources that, are, that they integrate for the client, identified, identified for instance as 2PL or 3PL. Their position of the market relies mainly on the resources that they own or control, and this will stay even in the cargo ecosystem. They will have some advantages from the ecosystem in terms of better communication with the clients or with the other LSPs, but their business model will not evolve towards a more advanced uh, 
to more advanced services. Rather, they will become even more similar to LSP. The network bound integrators. They are companies, uh, these companies provide the integrated logistics solution by pulling resources from a network of business partners that they are able to aggregate and coordinate. The network may be a stable supply chain, as in case of 4PL, managing logistics, or be half for a large client. The key element in the value proposition is the ability to assess and integrate services from the network. This ability will become a commodity when a cargo ecosystem reaches its maturity, making it possible to connect it to logistic clients and providers outside the boundaries of private network or closed marketplace. Therefore, the changes brought by a cargo in this business model are mainly disruption, and this, and this role will disappear. Virtual integrator. These are new providers and that will emerge from the disruption of the network bond integrated business. They will exploit the richer information environment offered by iCargo to provide value added integration. For instance, certified low emission shipments or cargo safety control through the supply chain. Their value proposition will combine their cargo dynamic planning and the monetary capabilities with the know-how built by the integrator in a specific area, such as supply chain, cargo footprint, and international trade management. The changes brought by iCargo on the business model represent new opportunity for new businesses. For the RSP, we have again three different possible evolution for their business model. We have the enhanced LSP, the value the service environment focused provider. The enhanced LSP. This LSP uh, will exploit iCargo mainly to increase their visibility in the market and to improve their service. Customer. The value add the service provider. This provider will exploit iCargo to offer new logistics services with additional value-added element made possible by the information services available in the ecosystem. Finally, the environment focus tend to adapt the offers to the main customer's needs. About the ISI, we can see different roles. We have the basic uh, infrastructure uh, provided, software hardware vendors, and system integrators. The system integrators, as we know them today, will have a much uh, diminishing role in the cargo ecosystem. The matching with our cargo jobs has highlighted several potential disruption to the system integrated current business model and no clear opportunity to be pursued by evolving the business model. So this role will disappear. Uh, matching the, uh, concerning the software hardware vendors, the matching with the cargo job has outlined some relevant opportunities for the traditional ICT vendors to evolve their business model toward functionality as a service business model. It consists in the provision of specific functionality and chain for footprint evaluation in the form of an information service provided to the cargo ecosystem infrastructure. The customer has access to the functionalities and uses it on its own, paying either a subscription or a pay for or per, or per use fee. For example, per number of ship and plan and all load, or load units to monitor it. This functional, functionality as a service business model can also further evolve towards the virtual, virtual integrator business model. It consists in the provision of integrated transport and logistics solution to clients built from information collected through iCargo information services. The customer pays for the integrator to use the iCargo to fulfill the customer's request instead of using the iCargo functionality by itself. 
Compared to FSIs, virtual integrators provide an air trust service based on information and capability available resources or network. Therefore, the virtual integration service can be transparent to the users who only see the final result as a set of properly integrated logistics services. Then, we have the basic infrastructure provider that can evolve towards two different business models. One is the monitoring infrastructure provider, and the other is connectivity infrastructure provider. The connectivity infrastructure provider uh, consists in the provision of its infrastructure tools and support, enabling the iCargo users to publish, discover, integrate, and also execute logistic information services. On the other hand, the monitoring infrastructure provider consists in the provision of the devices, infrastructure and information services, enabling iCargo users to collect data on the execution state of logistic operation, vehicle and cargo movement, as well as emission and environment parameters. Now, let's see an example of um, a, a company, um, uh, a connectivity provider, uh, and it's a, a business model canvas. The value proposition of this uh, actor uh, has new opportunities in relation to the value proposition dimension, since, thanks to iCargo, it's able to collect and monitor the da data also gathered from peripheral devices to support administrative transactions and to facilita facilitate short-term relationships. Uh, concerning the, the right part of the business model canvas, so the parts related to the description of the value, we can see that we have no changes in the dimension of customer segments, that, uh, that since the customer remain the same, the channels are also not changed, the customer changes in the dimension related revenue streams, because the revenues can come from fixed as well as variable fees. In relation to the left part of the canvas, we can see that we have a new opportunity also in relation of the key resources dimension since uh, there, uh, these new resources are related to the, the activity to install and monitor devices devices and sensors and also the access to all the logistic operators of the port and inland terminal area. We can have incremental changes in the key activity since it is possible to publish and manage logistic information services and also to offer marketing and customer support, while the key partnership and the cost structure dimension are not changed. So now, as a conclusion of this webinar, I would like to highlight the added value of the proposed approach in the iCargo project. The fundamental points of the approach rely on the fact that the success of new products is not the result of a combination of casual factors, but it comes from a structured and strategy-driven approach. And in the, also in the product definition, we have to focus from the early stages in the value created for the customers and for the users, and how we have to differentiate from the competitors. So uh, the, the main point is that it is extremely important to focus on the idea itself, since the idea uh, is the starting ingredient of each business model. Uh, we have also to, to have clear in mind that the same idea in most cases is already on the market, on different forms. So what really can make the difference is the idea shaping. So in defining the idea, we have not just to focus on the technology innovation and the combination of different technology, but we have also to focus on the new business model definition. If it's clear the motivation and the needs and the value created for the customer, the new business model can be competitive, offering and offer a real value to the customer. Finally, um, in, in iCargo, we, also, uh, we are also using a tool 
to support the definition of the ideas. Uh, during my presentation, I focused on the theoretical and theoretical part to study the evolution of business model of logistic actors. If we, as we did in iCargo, we have to focus on product ideas to really introduce in the market, we, we need a more practical tool. Uh, Blue Green has developed this tool called Value Map. Uh, if you are interested, you can visit this website, www.valuemap.com. Uh, this tool uh, foresees different uh, opportunities. You uh, can have a free book uh, to be downloaded. And you find there the description of a, stru a structured strategy driven approach to define uh, your product and your business model. And also a free app that supports you in elaborating the product ideas and also your innovation strategy. The main point is that uh, by applying this tool, uh, you can have a great added value represented not only describing the different dimension of the business model, but also to have the possibility to testing and simulate the economic vi viability of the business model. And so go in some way beyond a poor design of your business model. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Valentina, uh, for your presentation. And uh, now it's time for for questions. Uh, I don't know. You can use the chat or the the messaging tab in the system because I'm not able to to use it. Um. Yeah, we have the Q&A window available for this, and uh, it should okay. be uh, uh -huh. on your screen uh, now. So if you have any question, you can uh, pop it in the Q&A window. Um, okay, are there any questions? Any issues to be discussed in details? Well, not yet, but uh, maybe Valentina, I have one question uh, for you. Um, yes. In your slides, uh, you mentioned that uh, in, in this world of the iCargo ecosystem, uh, the system integrator uh, will probably be out of business uh, uh, in the future, um, if, if this progresses uh, um, as planned. Um, what would be the best strategy for, uh, for such a uh, such an organization uh, to move to a connectivity provider or what is your opinion on that? Uh, I think that uh, the poor system integrators will disappear uh, in terms of um, poor system integrators as we intend now. I think that the, they can have a great possibility in evolving toward virtual integrators because the virtual integrator will be the new um, uh, the real new role with a lot of uh, new functionalities, opportunities, also in terms of businesses inside the cargo ecosystem. Okay, thank you for that. You're welcome. So far, we do not have any other questions. Uh, maybe Inyaki from your side. Uh, no, but I have activated the, the audio. Uh, of the attendance also if they want to, to okay. ask. Uh, by the way, there mm -hmm. there is one question uh, coming in now um, from uh, I'm Shoka Consulting, if I pronounce it correctly. And here she is asking, uh, uh, were there any IT standards uh, considered in the formulation of the business model? And what is the role for IT standards in this, uh, in this model? OK. Um, if we are talking about the methodology that we apply to find out the impact of the IT standards, we can say that we consider uh, IT, so technology innovation brought uh, by iCargo. Of course, iCargo considers different standards related to logistics, and um, by applying this methodology, uh, we find out for the different profiles how this uh, innovation, also technology innovation, can impact on the different dimension of the canvas. 
Okay, so so there you take uh, standardization clearly into uh, into account. Yes, yeah. since it's a core part of the Itargo project. Yeah, obviously. And without uh, standardization, would there be any change uh, to the uh, to the business models and the um, uh, and the ideas that that you uh, presented? Uh, yes, uh, it's not fundamental that uh, IT standards, but it, it's fundamental the issues related to IT innovation, IT new tools. And so this uh, approach is it's quite flexible because we can find out the impact of uh, IT innovation brought by iCargo, but also by impact of different new um, technology, uh, IT standard, and so on. Okay. Um, well, so far there aren't any other questions uh, in the uh, uh, in the chat window. Ah, uh, well, maybe one follow-up question from Jan uh, Loros, um, and that is: Do you consider standardization, uh, from the perspective of Arcago and business models, as an opportunity or a threat? Oh, in terms of business model evolution, uh, I can say that it's neither an opportunity or a threat. I mean. Uh, since it's uh, a core part of iCargo, we consider it, and in in different uh, in relation to the different roles, uh, it can have different impact. Uh, for example, uh, it could be an opportunity for new uh, roles, since uh, if it's a new standard, by applying this new standard, uh, this profile this profile can cover a new role in the ecosystem, and so can evolve and can have to, towards a new business model by pursuing in this possibility. But on the other hand, if uh, uh, an actor is not applying this new standard, this could be considered as a threat because uh, uh, if, it is, if its business model is not based on this, in the future um, this actor will have uh, less possibility for a new business. Okay. okay. Um... Well, I can't see any other questions uh, remaining. So maybe Iñaki, you can uh, summarize uh, today and maybe also uh, highlight something okay. uh, about uh, any future uh, webinars. Yeah. There is, there is uh, another question. Ah, OK. Um, one, one last question then. <laughs> Uh, and <laughs> also for you, yeah. uh, Valentina, uh, uh, can, can you ask. clarify uh, the difference between the FSI and the LSI? Yeah, good because the FSI are the users providing the combined door-to-door -door service. Um, they are, for example, freight forwarder, 3PL company. Also, in some cases, it could be the LSE itself through its logistic department. While the ISIs uh, represent the organization providing the information infrastructure required by, by the LSC, LSP, but also by the FSIs. And uh, the ISIs are able to integrate uh, the logistics services also providing infrastructure information. So it could be a sort of uh, a, a more mature role of the FSIs. Uh, the, the ISIs uh, for example, provide a link to the various providers of software services, for example, planning or greenhouse gas estimation functionalities offer in SSS mode, for example. Okay. 